I'm speaking to Rod James, who until recently was CIO of Novartis. Um, Rob, I'd really like to talk to you about personalised medicine, which I think appeals to us all, rather than a sort of blanket approach to any illness we might have and hope it cures us. But before we get to that, I think something that's um, possibly not as exciting but really important is the whole thing about people and the data that companies are going to hold on us. And that seems to me to be potentially quite a big stumbling block. How do you see that? Yeah, I, I think you raise a, a very good point. Um, it is very natural that people would worry about mm -hmm. who's looking at their health data um, for obvious reasons. But what's interesting is, is in the old world where you had paper records, you never really could tell who was looking at your data, right? Right. Actually, to, in today's environment where we have electronic uh, health records, um, we actually have the, the possibility of putting order trails to really make sure that we secure that data in, in the best way possible. So I think number one, technology can actually help protect the data better than otherwise. Um, you know, for patients that want to know who's looking at their data or will want to give permission or, or, or not. I think secondly, the the upside of the benefit of sharing the data in order that you can manage your health better, I think for many people will outweigh maybe the fear, as long as you have a trusted relationship with who you're going to share it with. Okay, okay. So let's move on to the more possibly exciting, if no less important, or no more important angle of personalized medicine. And um, I also was interested in something you said earlier about payment by outcome. Sure rather than payment by dosage? Yeah, well, well again, if you go back to the fundamental consumer need, you know, if we have an illness um, and we would like to get a treatment, you know, a, a fundamental premise would be we shouldn't mind paying a fair value price, provided there's the right outcome. And I think in the current system today, that's where the problem is. You know, you've read about treatments for cancer maybe you know uh, fantastic treatments but they cost hundred and fifty thousand dollars and they don't work with every patient right? but somebody has to pay that bill and I think you know as data becomes more prevalent as we have the technology in order to enable personalized medicine we're really going to be in a better position um, you know thanks to big data to be able to determine did we achieve an outcome or did we not and it's, it's complicated because it's not just about, okay, did it work from a chemical perspective or not? You have to look at the patient as part of the equation, right? Mm. So if you're getting a lung cancer treatment, but you choose to still smoke, all bets should be off then. So, so how are we going to capture that data to make sure that we really know what was the cause of the outcome? And those are some of the challenges that I think there are exciting advances uh, over the last couple of years. Okay, and, and how, personal, how personal can we get with medicine? Well, it's interesting, um, you know, at least as a mathematician, the sky is the limit. That's, that's my perspective. You know, I, I think it's quite possible at some point in the future that somebody uh, will have uh, a, a problem, some kind of disease. Uh, hopefully that that would be detected very, very early thanks to technology. And that uh, some large computer somewhere uh, is going to be in a position to interpret that data and say, wait a minute, the right treatment for you and the right dosing is X, okay? And would actually be able to potentially, maybe through 3D printing, produce a pill that'd be very specific to yourself. And what about, you? you we were talking about sequencing the genome, it's getting more affordable. Sure. I mean, talk about big data, that is seriously big data. Um, how realistic do you think it is, or how near do you think we are to being able to do it fairly routinely, if not every day? Well, you know, there's nothing stopping it from being done every day or, or routinely other than the cost and other than, you know, our consumers, our people prepared to go through that. Uh, and there are naturally some uh, regulatory barriers, you know, um, it's been well publicized recently around you know companies that have offered a service you know there are natural concerns around what are they going to do and what accountability do they take for giving that information back to the patients but um 
there's nothing technically stopping us really from doing that today. And uh, I, I think you know what we're looking for are safe, practical ways where we can use that data to keep a patient healthy, or when a patient has illness, to help get them back on track and make sure that the physician has all the tools at the array to pick the right treatment and, and manage the patient back to good health. Rob, thank you very much indeed. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay.